Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a pattern based on a square made out of triangles looking something like this and there are some interesting techniques that we're going to learn along the way. I'm going to click on new file. I'm going to create a document 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels in size but basically yours can be any size that you like. Now I'm going to make my starting shape a square so I'm going to the rectangle tool I'm just going to select it. I want to have a filled shape and I don't want it to have any stroke at all so I'm going to select one of the colors that I have pre-planned for this design so this is just a brown. I'll click once in the document my rectangle is going to be 100 by 100 which is basically a square. I'm going to click away from this shape. Now next up I need a line so I'm going to the line segment tool now I'm going to set it to no fill but I am going to give it a stroke. For this I'm going to use black. Now the color is going to be sacrificed so we're not going to see this eventually. Just make sure that you can see your line over your shape, that's all. I'm going to hold the shift key as I drag down to create quite a long line. It's important that it's going to be long enough to go across the square at an angle and if it's too long that's just fine too. So I'm going back to the selection tool. I'm going to choose object transform and rotate. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and I want this one and the original so I'm just going to click on copy. Now I'm going to select both these shapes but making sure that I do not select that rectangle object transform and we're going back to rotate and this time we're going to rotate at 45 degrees so it forms the shape of a cross and I'll click OK. Now we can bring our square in and we're going to line everything up by selecting over everything and then using the align options here I'm going to select horizontal align center and vertical align center. If you don't see those options you can go to Window and Align and use them from the Align panel as you can see here. Now the tool we're going to use next is critical in terms of what you have selected. So you can only select one line at a time. It has to be a line and you cannot select anything else. We're going to Object and then Path and then Divide Objects below. What this tool does is it uses a line to divide a filled shape along the path of the line. So I'm just going to click once on that and that has divided this shape into two pieces. Now I'm going to select the next line because you can only select one line at a time and you have to use a line to do the cut and you cannot have the shape selected. It's a finicky tool but it's really handy once you get used to using it. Object path and then divide objects below. So now I have an object that is divided into four equal triangles. I'm going to stick them all back together again because that was why we used that tool so that we would have a really nice shape. I'm going to target the fill. I'm going to click on three of these shapes in turn and I'm going to apply different colors to them. So I'm using the colors that I have pre-selected to use for this particular project. Well at least four out of the six. Six is a pretty good selection of colors. Next we're going to the lasso tool and I'm going to draw a circle around this midpoint here. The lasso tool allows me to select an anchor point by just drawing around it. An anchor point or multiple anchor points. Right now I've got four of them selected. The middle anchor point here for every single one of these triangles. I'm going to the direct selection tool and now without doing anything else I'm just going to pull these to make a really nice shape. Now this is lined up perfectly and that's really crucial for this design because it's got such sharp lines you are going to need to have everything lined up perfectly. Next we're going to the selection tool. I'm going to select over the shape. I'm holding the Alt or Option key as I drag this shape into a new position directly lined up against this other one. I'm going to change these colors. So I'm going to select over just this shape here. I'm going to the Recolor Artwork tool. I'm going to Advanced Options and I'm going to select this option here and that randomly changes the color order. So it's just going to reassign the color order in this particular shape. So things are going to change a little bit. It's just saving me having to do all the work myself. Once I'm happy, I'll click OK. At the same time, I'll bring in the two missing colors. So I'm going to bring in the blue 
and I'm going to bring in this other blue. Now it doesn't really matter which of these squares I bring those alternate colors into, but I want to be able to see all six of my colors at work now. Now I'm going to select over these shapes, hold the Alt or Option key and just drag down Again, so they're butted up against the original shapes. I'm going to select over all of these. I'm going to do the same job with the Recolor Artwork tool, but this time revolving the colors around both the shapes at the same time. So basically, I just want to break things up. Now, I'm not overly concerned about this. I'm kind of liking it. I'm actually going to use it. So I'm just going to click OK. Let's go to these two shapes on the side. Make sure that you take a big enough selection that you're going to pick up these shapes here. Hold down the Alt or Option key and just move it across to the edge here. With them still selected, let's rotate the colors through those. So now I'm going to look at this shape because what I'll ultimately want to happen is that I have some things that are sort of over the line here. So I'm looking at this one. I'm also looking at this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to join these two together. So let's just join those two together and let's come in here and let's change this color. So it's more obvious that this is actually part of this square here. Actually really poor choice of color because it's exactly the same as I've used there. So let's go and find something different. So that's going to work there. The other thing I'm going to look at is the possibility of joining a color over this edge here. You can see this one's joined into a single shape. Let's go and join this into a single shape as well. Select both colors and go to the Pathfinder and just click to join them. You can see that we've got a color accident happening here, so we need to just find a different color for this. I'm also worried about these two colors being the same, so let's just flip one of those and these two as well. Okay, I think that's looking better. At this point, we can make the pattern. I'm going to select over all of these shapes and go to Object, Pattern, Make, I'm going to zoom out because I want to be able to see the pattern at its full size to see if there are any repetitions that we need to deal with. I'm also going to view and down here to hide artboards so that I can't see the artboard. That's going to make life a little bit easier for me. Now at the moment we've got a grid pattern here so you'll see that all of these shapes are repeated in lines. We can break that up by using the brick by row but in terms of brick by row we need to be really careful about our offset because we had three blocks across to start off with. If we use a half offset then the blocks are going to be offset from each other and that may not be a design you're looking for. I want mine to look like blocks so I'm going to select one of these two options either one third or two thirds. So one third is this one and two thirds is this one. So I get a choice of these two. I think that one third is going to be a better design for me. I'm thinking I'm liking that better. At this point, if you're happy with your design, you can just click done. I'm going to bring back my artboards with view and then show artboards. I'm going to my selection tool going to select over these shapes and just move them out of the way for now and we're going to add a rectangle here that is a thousand by a thousand which for me was the starting shape that I had for my artboard. I'm going to target the fill and go and select my pattern and so this is what my pattern is going to look like. We can recolor the pattern very easily by going to recolor artwork and now in Illustrator there's this option for generative recolor. If you don't have that available, let's show you in a minute how you could recolor just in the traditional way but let's try generative recolor to start off with. Now if this is the first time you've used this tool you'll be prompted to accept a agreement for using it. And what you can do is use any of these sample prompts or you can type your own sample prompt. So for example, if I typed in here fresh summer fruit and press enter, then I'll get color schemes that are based on this as an AI prompt for color schemes. So these are the options that we have and I can select any of them to see if I like them in my design. You can also just use the sample prompts. So let's go to these and let's see what something like Trippy Disco looks like. 
Now at this point, if you see something that you like, you should select it because these prompts are going to give you different results every time you use them. Now I really like this one, so I'm going to select it. I'm just going to click away from this dialog and you can see up here in the swatches panel, I now have a pattern for that particular color scheme. Let's go back to selecting this shape. We have the original color scheme that we created and a new variant of that color scheme. Now at this point, we can go ahead and and create more color schemes. So with my shape selected, I'm going back to recolor artwork. This time I'm going to use the basic recolor tool. So I'm just selecting it. But of course you could play around with generative recolor if it's available in your version of Illustrator. I'm going to advanced options. Now we can roll the colors around here so we can sit with the same colors as we're using, but just find a different position for them. If you find something that you like, you absolutely must click OK because otherwise you're going to lose it. So click OK. I've saved it here. It's a new color scheme and then I can recolor it again. And Illustrator is going to give me a new color scheme for anything I do now, which is different. Let's go into the edit options. And at this point, you can see that the colors are linked because the option is to unlink them. So if the option is to unlink them, that means they're already linked. And then we can just drag this around. And so we're going to find the color scheme that has the same spatial relationship between colors, but just a different set of colors. If you want to, you can unlink the harmony colors. And so you could play around with a different color to replace any of these colors. I'm thinking I'm liking a sort of more purple here. I think it looks a little bit better. I'm going to click OK. And so let's see what we've got. We've got the original color scheme when we created the pattern, the new one that we created through the generative recoloring, and then a variation of that where I rotated the colors around, and then a variation of that again where I selected the colors that I wanted to use. So every time you use this recolor artwork tool, on a pattern, Illustrator is going to create a brand new pattern for you. So you don't have to worry about doing that manually. So at any point you could come back and change these squares around. For example, one thing that you may want to do is to change the center point for some of these squares. So I'm going back to my lasso tool. I'm going to grab the center point for this particular square. I'm going to my direct selection tool and I could drag this down here. So I could do that for a couple of squares just to change things up a little bit more. And then I can go back to my pattern tool and remake my pattern this time with a slightly different look to the squares of color that we've got in this design. Now, another thing that you can do with these shapes is to put a line around them. And that was why I was careful to make sure that this shape would be joined up together to make a single shape. That's really important because it's not going to work otherwise, or you're going to get lines as if these were two separate shapes and this one too. Again, I joined them together to make sure it would all work. So we're going to select over these shapes here and we're going to add a line to them. So I'm going to the appearance panel. You can get to this by choosing window and then appearance. Now in the appearance panel, you'll see that we've already got a stroke option here, but there is no stroke color. So I'm just going to open up this dialog here and I'm going to choose a stroke color to use. We can change this later on if we want to. So I'm just going to choose probably a dark brown. Now the stroke is around the edges of these shapes. I'd like something a little bit more interesting than that. So I'm going to select the stroke alone and I'm going to click here on FX to add a new effect and I'm going up here to path and then to offset path. The offset path tool allows me to offset a path around these shapes. Now at the moment it looks absolutely awful, but let's see what we can do with it by reducing the offset. So I'm going in a negative direction and you can see now that I've got the lines inside the shapes and you can also see why it was so important that this shape here and this shape here were joined together so that they would be just a single shape and so the lines would be around the entire shape, not around individual shapes, even though they were the same color, they would look like they were the same shape, but they wouldn't have been. So I'm just going to click OK here, click away from this, and we can make a pattern out of this. So I'm again going to select over it. We'll just go to Object Pattern, Make, 
click OK. This time I'm going to choose the same brick by row, but this time I'm going to use a two third offset. So I'm happy with that. I know it's going to work just fine. I'll click Done. Let's go back to the shape that we were working with, the original artboard. Click on the artboard and click on our new pattern. Well, it's come in as the stroke and not the fill. So let's just put it there as the fill. So this is our design. And again, this can be easily recolored by just selecting it, going to the recolor artwork tool and then choosing either the generative recolor or the recolor option. So there are lots of options that you have with these very, very simple square shapes, turning them into triangles and then applying interesting effects to them to create really interesting patterns. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.